When we add and subtract polynomials, we just need to look for like terms. We also need to write the answers in standard form so the exponents go from the highest to the lowest. So in example A, the highest exponent out of all of these, when we want to add these two quantities together, is the 14x to the third. There aren't any other x to the thirds, so we'll put that first. Next, we'll look for x to the seconds. We have three of them right here. We're going to add this many more right here. So it'll be 3 plus 1. So all together we'll have 4x to the seconds. Next, we'll look for plain x's. We have positive 1 right here. We're going to add negative 1 right here. But 1 plus 1 is 0, so those cross out. Last but not least, we will look for the plain numbers. We have a plus 7 and a plus 2, so 7 plus 2 is 9. There's the final answer. It's in standard form, and we're done. Another way to think about these is if there were numbers in front of the parentheses, it'd be a positive 1 in front, and if we were to distribute a positive 1 to each of those, nothing would change. Same thing with the second set of parentheses. If I put a positive 1 out there, nothing would change on the inside if I multiplied through by 1. So you basically can just ignore the um, parentheses and just focus on combining like terms with the signs in front of them that you see. So let's find the highest exponents first, which will be the x to the thirds. So negative 2 minus 8 is negative 10x to the third. Next, I'll look for x to the seconds. I have positive 3 of them right here and negative 2 right there. So 3 minus 2 is 1, so positive 1x to the second. Next, I'll look to see if there's any x's. There's no x's in the first part, but we have plus negative 4x. So plus a negative turns to one big minus sign. And last, we have the plain number. The only plain number we have is a positive 9. So we'll put that at the end. Now we'll do the subtraction problems. If I were to look in front of the first set of parentheses, there's a positive 1. So if we were to distribute it, it wouldn't change anything inside. We'll still have 1 minus x to the second. If I were to distribute this negative 1, to everything inside, what it's going to do is change the sign on all of those because negative 1 times positive 3 is negative 3x squared. Negative 1 times positive 2 is negative 2x. And negative 1 times negative 5 is positive 5. So you can see all the signs switched from positive 3 to negative 3, positive 2x to negative 2x, and negative 5 to positive 5. Now we can combine like terms. So we can put the x squareds together. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4 x squareds. Next we have the minus 2x. There aren't any other x's. And last we have 1 plus 5, which is 6. And that's it. On D we'll do the same thing. First I'm going to rewrite the first one because Distributing a 1 isn't going to change any of those, so it stays 3x squared plus 3x plus 5. Now when I distribute that negative 1 to all of those, it's going to be negative 2x squared. That negative x will switch to positive x, and the negative 2 will switch to positive 2. Now we can combine like terms. So it looks like the highest exponent is x squared. So we'll do 3 minus 2, that's 1x squared. Next I'll look for the x's. So we have 3x's plus 1 more x is 4x's. And last but not least, we have positive 5 plus 2, which is positive 7. Real zeros of a polynomial are where the graph crosses the x-axis. All right, so here's some quick examples. If I drew a parabola that looked like that, it would cross the x-axis here and here, and we'd say there are two real zeros. 
if I drew a parabola that looked like this, maybe it was sitting right on the x-axis, there would be one real zero. Or I could draw a parabola that was floating up above the x-axis, in which case it wouldn't cross the x-axis at all, and there would be no real zeros. A parabola law like that would have imaginary zeros. When a graph changes direction, it's either going to go from increasing to decreasing, so it'll look like that, it'll look like a hill, or it'll go from decreasing to increasing, which means it'll go from down to up, and it'll look like that, like a valley. So that's what we're going to look for when we try to find changes in direction. In order to graph these, you have to use a graphing calculator. So you'll go to y equals, type in the equation, and the first time you look at the graph, it's going to look something like this. Don't copy this down. This is just an example. It's going to look like that. The thing we're trying to do is figure out how many zeros it has, how many times it crosses the x-axis. And that is too hard to see on the calculator. So what we're going to do is tell the calculator to zoom in on that spot. So if you press the zoom button and pick option 2, it will zoom in on that place. If you don't see something like that, and actually what you should do at the beginning is press zoom 6, which is zoom standard, and that will always put you to the normal 10 by 10 viewing window, just in case somebody had it zoomed in or out before you, you, you were using it. So um, once you zoom in, instead of seeing that, you will see the graph is much easier to see and it'll look like that. Now we can describe this graph. From left to right, so we always start the way we would read, the graph alternately, and watch where my dots go. First they're going up, and then they turn and go downwards. So the graph alternately increases and then decreases. It changes direction. Now we're looking for how many times it switches. So right here, that's like a hill. It changes direction. And over here, it goes from moving down to moving up. So right here is a change in direction. So it changes direction two times. It crosses the x-axis one, two, three times. So there appear to be three real zeros. When you type B in the calculator, it will show you something that looks like this. If you hit zoom 6, it would kind of look like that, but from further away. And when you zoom in, it shows you that's basically the general shape. So if we follow that arrow, this graph is going up and up. So this one's increasing the whole time. It never really alternates between anything. So we can put increases, and then that's it. We don't even need to say alternately. We can just say from left to right, the graph increases, and be done with that. It doesn't change direction. The only time it changes direction is when it actually goes from up to down or down to up. Going from increasing to increasing isn't a change in direction, so that's a zero. It crosses the x-axis one time, so there appears to be one real zero. Graph C, once you type that in, at first when you look at it, it's going to look like this on the calculator. My advice is to zoom in on the middle so you can see if that W shape actually goes above the x-axis or not. So when you zoom in, it's going to show you something that looks like this, which means that's the middle part of the graph, and it's just so zoomed in you can't see the outside parts of the W. But you do know now that the W shape goes above the x-axis and back below it like that. So you'll draw your answer like that. So first we check to see if it's increasing or decreasing first. So from left to right I'll follow it and I go down and then up. So this decreases 
and then increases. And it changes directions. There's one change, there's two change, there's the third change, so it changes directions three times, and it crosses the x-axis one, two, three, four times. So there appears to be four real zeros. The last graph is sort of strange looking. It looks like that, or your best sketch. There's nothing we really need to zoom in on because there's not really a question where it crosses the x-axis. So this one, if we follow the line, goes down and then up. So it decreases and increases, changing direction only one time. It crosses the x-axis two times, so there appear to be two real zeros. If you don't have your own um, graphing calculator, you can always Google free online graphing calculator and type in those equations so you can look at the shapes of the graphs because all you need to do is get the shape so you can make the sketch. Good luck.